we have to be careful when we're looking at test score data. It's not the same thing as how many points did the New York Giants score versus the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. Uh, these tests have to be interpreted very carefully. Uh, when it comes to the Common Core, the study that we conducted uh, anticipates very little effect of the Common Core on future national achievement, despite all of the controversy about the Common Core, despite all the money that's being poured into the Common Core, we think it's going to have actually little impact. The second study looking at the main NAEP and the long-term trend NAEP uh, is a pretty simple story. We have two tests. They have the same name. They're both called NAEP, but they give us different information about the size of these SES gaps. And the third study, uh, to sum that one up, looks at three common misinterpretations of international test scores. The first being uh, the common attribution of really questionable causality, pulling out one particular policy and saying it had this impact. The second problem being the problem of using rankings when rankings can uh, actually mislead people as to how nations are doing. And then the third one being the A-plus nation fallacy where we focus on one high-performing country and say we should do what what they're doing. The whole idea of standards is to close gaps. So you want to be able to close the difference between the very top achieving students and the very low achieving students, or the very top achieving states and the low achieving states. And it turns out when we analyzed all the data on test scores, the variation in achievement isn't really between states. So it's not between, say, Mississippi and Massachusetts. Massachusetts is a very high scoring state. Mississippi is one of our lowest scoring states. And the way to explain this is the gap between Massachusetts at the top and Mississippi down here, that happens to exist in every single state. So every state in the union has its own little mini Massachusetts Mississippi gap and again, the Common Core isn't going to touch that. So the bottom line here was we concluded that the Common Core, if you look at the past history of how standards affect achievement, we concluded the Common Core will probably have very little effect on it. We looked at achievement gaps. And achievement gaps in education are considered to be gaps between uh, socioeconomic status groups. Uh, shorthand for that is SES groups. So for example, uh, the black-white test score gap, the gap between uh, black students and white students, um, the uh, gap between poor and non-poor students. So we look at students who qualify for free and reduced lunch. Those are, tend to be students from low-income ho houses. And we compare them to the kids who do not qualify. Uh, Hispanic white gap is another SES gap that uh, draws a lot of attention. And then finally, the gap between students who are learning English language, so English language learners, ELL students they're known as, and students uh, for whom English is their native language. So what we did is we have two NAEP tests, the long-term trend and the main NAEP, and we looked at the gaps on these two tests and said, asked the question, are the gaps about the same? And it turns out they're not, that the two tests actually give us different information about the magnitude, the size of the gaps. And it is consistently true that on the main NAEP, that's the more modern NAEP, the one that we use for, for example in No Child Left Behind, uh, on that test the gaps are wider on that test than they are on the long-term trend. The flaw of dubious causality, and typically what it involves is someone who believes in something very deeply like detracking or national standards or something else, and then pointing to a country that has an increase in scores and saying, see, I told you I was right. Uh, look, at, uh, look at how this country is gaining. It is possible because of the way rankings work for a country not to change in its ranking at all and yet to have made significant progress. So that's the second problem. Rankings really should be used with great caution, and unfortunately they're not. People put way too much emphasis on rankings. And then the third problem I call the fallacy of the A-plus countries. And this uh, was a problem in particular here in the United States with advocates of national standards. I've been to several meetings where advocates of national standards say, look, if you look at the top ten countries in the world, they all have national standards. And that's not evidence that national standards is necessarily a good thing.
And I can give you, you know, very quickly, if you look at the bottom 10 nations of the world, they all have national standards too. So you have to look across the entire distribution, not just at uh, one particular cluster of countries at the top and say, well, that's what we should do.